Okay, I think we're on page, just gather my thoughts. Yeah, this is question three on page 355. It says the diagram shows seven transformations. If, in fact, it doesn't. If you look at 357, sorry, not 357, if you look at 355, you see all the transformations there. I've got, I'm going to have seven little screens and seven little sets of graphs so we can do, do it one at a time. So what I've got to do, I've got to match each of the following graphs with one of the following transformed functions. So that's my standard y equals some sort of function of x and that's defined as sine x today and I've got to do all these seven things to it so I've got to pick the right graph with the right transformation and then I've got to describe the transformation that needs to be carried out to get the graph of each function from the original graph of y equals sine x okay let's begin to do it now I haven't got lots and lots to choose from I've just got to relate to this to the original y equals sine x then pick the right transformation so they share the common point zero zero nothing transformed there. 91 becomes 92. Uh, 270 minus 1 becomes 270 minus 2. It seems that I have a stretch of times 2. So it's a stretch of scale factor 2 in the y direction. Okay. And there it is, scale factor 2, y direction, that's that one. So this graph is actually y equals 2 sine x. Okay? If related in general terms, we have y equals a f of x, and the a is worth 2, so y equals 2 f of x. In other words, 2 times the function of sine x, and there it is, it's a stretch of times 2 in the y direction whereby you keep the x coordinates unchanged but the y coordinate you multiply by 2 hence 91 becomes 92 270 minus 1 becomes 270 minus 2 therefore that is the correct equation of this transformed function where the original was y equals sine x so that one's done next one I've got a couple I've gone too far no, it's okay. I've got two lots and one graph. Okay, so this one's been done then. Uh, next one, there's the original again, y equals sine x. Here, I've got y equals sine x that's been lifted up in the air by one unit in the y direction. So, 0, 0 becomes 0, 1. Um, 270 minus 1 becomes 270, 0. So, as you can see, what's happened is the graph has been lifted plus one unit in the y direction. So from there to there, and from there to there. Essentially, I've now got y equals sine x, the original function, plus 1. All right, so that's that graph there, done. And so, essentially, I've used a vector to translate the graph or the function y equals sine x and the vector used sorry being a bit long winded but the vector used is now I've gone from 0 to 0 to 0 to 1 essentially I've lifted the whole thing 0 units along and 1 unit straight up so it's a translation using vector 0 1 and that is the, the new transformed graph of y equals sine x plus 1 so that's done what have we got here then go back to the original uh, 0, 0 matches 0, 0 there. 91 matches 93. We appear to have a stretch in the y direction by scale factor 3. Let's just check it. Uh, 270 minus 1 becomes 270 minus 3. It's true. So let's just write down the transformation. So for this one here, it's a stretch in the y direction. Um, using scale factor of 3. Alright, so let's just check it. So 93 compares to 90, where is the original? 91. Alright, so we've gone from y equals sine x into y equals 3 sine x. So that's what this one is, and that graph is then been identified. All right. So uh, generically speaking, we've got y equals a f of x, 
and the a is of course worth the 3 so y becomes 3 multiplied by the function of x and that's it all right but the actual answer is that that's the equation of that that new function there that's been transformed from sine x okay so that's 3 done so let's just cross off him and him and him just check I've got those right okay next one um, again here's the original y equals sine x there 0 0 becomes 0 2 seems to have jumped up two units in the y direction um, 270 minus 1 becomes 271 it's gone up once twice so I'm convinced then we've gone up two units there you go 360 0 becomes 362 so we've gone up two units in the y direction so we've got we're looking for y equals sine x plus 2 and that's that one done so it's a translation of y equals sine x and we're using vector 0 along and 2 straight up in the air alright beautiful isn't it that's all there is to it now this one here is a lovely one um, let's compare with the original so 0 0 remains a 0 0 um, 91 becomes 90 minus 1 270 minus 1 becomes 271 effectively what I have is a reflection in the x-axis this is me dotting in ever so carefully and nicely and that blue dotted arrangement actually matches what's there in graph f and graph f is therefore going to be y equals minus the sine of x in other words generically speaking y equals minus f of x and you know that's a reflection in the x-axis so we're going to say so reflection in the x axis and I, I think I've got that on there where is it then so we're looking for y equals minus sine x and there it is we've got it okay let's just cross off these few I've got that I've got that I've got that what else have I got cross them off I've got that one and I've got that one there's two left so here, here are the last two then now this looks quite easy I'm going from 0 0 to 0 minus 2 I think I've dropped down two units I'm going from 91 down to 90 minus 1 there it is there I've dropped down two units like that I'm going from 80, 180 0 to 180 minus 2 yep that's correct so essentially I've got my y equals sine x and then I subtract 2 alright that's my transformation so that identifies that one there so how did I do that I did another translation and I used the vector 0 minus 2 okay 0 left or right not moving at all and I'm dropping the graph straight down two units alright two units straight down hence 0 minus 2 to translation vector so I've gone from y equals sine x to y equals sine x minus 2 and therefore this last one has got to be y equals minus 2 sine x but let's see why it is now there's two ways of looking at this one and I'll do it the most obvious way if the, if the 2 wasn't there we'd have y equals sine x so uh, we'll have y equals minus sine x and you know that's a reflection in the x-axis so the first thing we're going to do is say uh, number one reflection in the x-axis followed by um, a stretch in the y direction of scale factor 2. Have you got that? So what we do, let's just do a quick reflection. So we're going to reflect it first. So that's what we're doing now. There's, there's y equals minus sine x. And then we're going to stretch it up there and stretch it along there by scale factor 2 and that gives us the results shown in graph G okay so that's one way we can say it now I can say it a different way and I'll change color I can say it will be a stretch let's put it up here then this is the alternative solution um, stretch in the y direction using scale factor 
of minus 2. So this minus 2 okay, has the effect of reflecting it in the y-axis and stretching it um, parallel to the y-axis by a scale factor of 2. All right, So that's two ways you can say it. I prefer reflect it first, then stretch it, or you can stretch it using a scale factor of minus 2. And either way, you get the same effect. And that's it. I've matched each um, transform graph um, by comparing it with the original y equals sine x. I've matched each graph with the correct equation, and I've described how each one can be transformed from y equals sine x to each of those seven transformed functions. And that's question three done. Quite tricky, not too bad though. And uh, I think I'll save that video. Definitely a keeper.